Hey, welcome back to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're making a great southern dish with some largemouth bass, so y'all stay tuned. Alright, so we got the, uh, the charcoals getting ready, because, you know, here at the Backwoods Gourmet, you know we're going to have to make them on cast iron. So while we're getting that ready, hey, watch this uh, beautiful bass footage. But right now we got four fish. We got one uh, very, very close to six pounds, and we have three keepers. Uh, was hoping to catch one more keeper, and uh, maybe that's him right there. Yep, that's him right there. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good fish right there. Good keeper. So it's a nice 14, 15 inch bass. And um, so that's a uh, that's a limit for us. So we'll see you guys back at the house and we'll cook them up. Yeah, that looked like fun, didn't it? Yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, now let's take them over to the cleaning table and uh, flay them up for you guys. I'm going to show you today a great southern dish to make with a largemouth bass, um, especially if you only got, you know, a couple. Uh, doesn't take a lot. Right, we're, uh, our bass is already filleted, chilled down, so uh, you're going to need one fillet for each serving of this. This is uh, about a three-quarter of a pound fillet, and I uh, just want to show you this uh, beautiful find I found. I found this in yard sale. I think I paid a dollar for it. Uh, beautiful old uh, fillet knife and this was actually um, stainless steel and made in Japan uh, it was already sharp when I got it but I, I've sharpened it a little more and it is really awesome uh, awesome knife you some, so sometimes you find some of these old ones you know before everything was made in damn China uh, can be a lot better what we're gonna do with this fish is we're gonna cube it up in uh, you know bite size bite size chunks so this big half of the steak here, I'm going to go ahead and like split that, going right down the middle, and then uh, I'm going to just chunk it up. Like I say, you'll need about one of these for each, for each person uh, you're feeding for an entree size dish. So we're just going to put it back in the bag for right in a second and throw it back in the refrigerator until we get the rest of our things ready to go. All right, our three weapons of choice today. We're gonna have, this is the big 12 inch. Um, this is an old generic lodge pan. Um, actually got that one in the yard sale for $5. It's been a great pan. Um, our little eight inch uh, camp made right here. And our, uh, our 10 inch lodge. One of my favorites. This one going to use for deep frying our sides. Okay, so that's the three uh, three pieces of cast iron we're going to use today. Well, today's dish is uh, bass and grits. I don't know any other uh, name for it. We're going to. Uh, it's very very reminiscent of the old gullet dish shrimp and grits.
Okay, so this is our grits right here in the little number eight. And uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and set them on our, our just our peep holes there. We already had those up to boil and mixed them in, so right now we're just simmering them, simmering them. So we got them on the low coals. What we're gonna do on this pile is fried okra. So let's go ahead and get that ready. While we're getting the okra ready, let's go ahead and put our number 10 in there. Let's got some uh, some used oil in it. We used uh, just yesterday. Be fine. Go ahead and get that on those coals and let that start heating up. And making uh, fried okra is real easy. We just took our fresh okra from the garden. We're going to season it pretty liberally. It needs a bit of salt. We're using uh, Seminole Swamp seasoning again. Okay. It's pretty good on everything. Use whatever you like. Or salt, pepper, garlic. It'll be great too. So, good, good dose of that. And a uh, little tip to this, um, cut this about 10-15 uh, minutes before you put the seasoning on. Let's all the, uh, the juices start coming out of the okra and will help your, uh, your cornmeal stick to it. So at this point we just sprinkle the cornmeal over it and we're going to toss it and just let it sit there for a minute and um, the juices from the okra will actually um, start to batter, kind of make a batter from the cornmeal on those and then we'll maybe toss them again before, right before you put them in the fryer. Sorry for the noise. We have a sheriff's department helicopter hovering around my house right now. So, if anything should go down, we're ready. We'll just keep this over here handy. Uh, here, I like me some uh, Old Bay on mine. Uh, again, use whatever kind of uh, seafood seasoning you like. This seems to work pretty good for me, that little shaker thing. Yeah, this can't get enough out of that. Alright, so we're just going to kind of mix them around a little bit of Old Bay. Uh, Dom Prudhomme's Seafood Magic would be also awesome on these. Okay, and then we're just going to give them a little bit of flour and toss them in the flour. We just want to dredge them, get each one of them coated individually. Important you get all these things uh, ready ahead of time because once this dish gets started, it goes very quickly. Okay, so what we've already done is we've uh, we've cut up some bacon. It's about one slice of bacon cut up. We got uh, one of those little uh, dainty French onions, a shallot. Um, it's pretty dainty. Uh, it's so dainty that when I put it on a cutting board and started to uh, cut it, um, it went wee all over the cutting board. All right, and then we have a little bit of ooh, ah, slippery little rascal, about a tablespoon of garlic. We're also going to need some green onions, but we'll pick them fresh a little bit later in the dish. We started these grits a little. Uh, a little earlier so those are almost done they're nice and stiff that's the way we want them for right now so what we're going to do is just they're going to keep cooking in that in that nice uh, piece of cast iron we're just going to go ahead and pull them off over here and set them to the side since we set that off to the side we're going to go ahead and move the coals that we had it on over here for our uh, our other black iron and it does fit there and we're going to just lay it right on the coals. I would love to have a spider skillet that size, I do not. Okay, our good grease is nice and hot, so we're just going to sift these uh, ochres through our fingers. And we're going to drop about three to four handfuls. You don't want to crowd them in the pot too much or they uh, won't crisp up. Just give them a little nestle, make sure they're all in there. Uh, deep frying, the number 10 works a lot better than the number 12.
all the yogurt's going, our other pan is hot, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put in our bacon. Every good cast iron cook starts out with bacon. That's just gonna season our pan. All right, first batch of okra looks golden brown. So go ahead and take that out and just strain it on some paper towels. This is a very simple and very delicious dish. I have a hard time uh, getting this all the way to the actual table before uh, people uh, are always sneaking uh, their fingers in and before you know, it's all gone. Bacon's starting to render. I'm going to go ahead and help it out a little bit. Give it about a tablespoon of butter. Okay, just about as soon as that butter melts, Go in with our garlic. That's one tablespoon of uh, diced garlic, minced garlic, whatever you chop it. I don't care how you put it in there, just put it in there. This dish, you probably want to cut it pretty good. Well, earlier, I told you guys we needed uh, some green onions. Didn't have any ready, but I always like like to really just come out and pick them for you guys because they're, they're right here. So, we need about two, about two green onions, right there. So we'll wash these guys up and I'll uh, give them a chop. Okay, uh, been a few minutes on the garlic. Go ahead and put in our shallots. This is one uh, shallot, they're pretty small. So, you just want to, you know, the table's kind of angle here, so kind of just kind of keep them moving around and all the rest of the wheat little onion. Okay things are going to go pretty fast now. We're wanting to get uh, some more butter in there, about another tablespoon. And then we're going to take our bass chunks, toss them in that flour one more time, make sure they're all nice and coated and separate. And then we're just going to start uh, putting them in the pan here. Just separate them. And what we're going to do is just brown these in this oil that in the butter and the bacon. We'll just uh, turn those every once in a while until they're nice and golden brown. This fish is almost uh, ready to uh, make the gravy with. So. Go ahead and get a hold of that guy. Get my pot holder here. Pans are hot. Alright. Let's go ahead and nestle these up pretty good right here in the middle. This is a big pan, so it takes a little bit of heat. I'm gonna go right in the middle with it. Sit around top of the coals. Alright, now that the fish is golden brown, we get that back up to temperature, we're gonna go ahead and pour just a little bit of cream in there. And that uh, flour from the fish. It's going to thicken that right up. Our heat is going to give it a gentle stir. We don't want to break all this fish up. Gently stir it around. That's, that thing's still coming up to heat. That'll make a, a sauce very quickly. And since uh, we want to get that scraped up off the bottom, we're gonna, now we're going to get out a wooden tool and just keep that moving around the pan. Now 
that's going to bring all that yummy goodness up. Now if you're going to try to do this for a couple of people, you're probably going to want to have two pans going. And that's thickening up real nice. Give it just a little another shot of cream. Just try to maintain our consistency. That's beautiful and creamy. Go ahead and pull it off the fire. Get our grits ready. The grits are coming back on. nice and thick that's what we want them to be at this point here we're going to put just like two tablespoons of cream in there that's what we call this creamy grits we're going to put uh, a good pinch of our fresh scallions right in there going to help the flavor them make sure they're stirred in good and in here, that's about uh, two tablespoons, uh, maybe maybe more. I love this stuff, so as much as you like. That's Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. So this is uh, cheese grits. So we'll just stir that in there. And at this point, these guys are gone. So we're going to take them off, put the lid on, and uh, let them sit for about a couple minutes. And we'll serve it up. goodness okay guys here's the uh, plate up backwards gourmet style first thing coming in is our creamy cheesy grits with the parmigiano reggiano tree cheese and, uh, get some of those right in the center of our plate those are those are delicious on their own right there all right glitz on grits on the plate here comes our uh, largemouth bass with gravy. I'll just come right over the top of that. That is a awesome, awesome recipe right there. Let's we'll clean that plate up a little bit. All right, here we got some of our uh, fresh garden-grown fried okra right there garnish we got a couple of our fresh uh, Roma tomatoes next part of our garnish a little bit of our fresh green onions from the garden They're over the top just adds a little bit of color and a nice uh, crunch a little little perky pick me up there uh, something fresh that's some uh, fresh cilantro and then uh, Last but not least, right over the top, fresh Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. A little bit of that. And just for just for grins, as a final little a garnish over the plate, a little sprinkle of Old Bay. I really hope you enjoyed this not so ordinary 
uh, seafood dish made with largemouth bass. Um, I've been uh, nibbling on that and I'll tell you right now it is pretty damn good. Uh, I would go a little further I would say that's probably one of the best dishes on our channel right now. So y'all try to make this uh, next time you get a fish you don't have to be a largemouth bass and uh, the great thing about this is this is a great dish to make when you don't get a lot of fish when you don't have enough to feed you know 20 people fried fish if you get a get a few it uh, makes it go a long ways it's really really good mm, wow really good hey thanks for watching the backwoods gourmet as always please subscribe share comment hey and if you like what we're doing hit that like button and we'll see you next time me a plate. Everybody else ate. I'm starving. That fried okra. I can't keep my hands off of it. Mmm. 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 Like popcorn. Hey, thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. As always, please subscribe, comment, share, like us, and we'll see you next time.